Okay, I guess I should begin. Uh, hi everyone and welcome. I know that there aren't too many people here at the moment, um, but uh, hopefully people will join uh, shortly. And this video will be available uh, for others to view afterwards anyway. So I can continue on um, with our presentation and uh, hopefully uh, others will join, as I say, or get to watch back after. So hopefully everyone here at the moment can, can hear and see me okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Josephine Griffith. I'm a lecturer in the School of Computer Science here in NUI Galway. I lecture uh, at undergraduate and postgraduate level uh, in computer science and information technology. So I'd like to talk to you today about computer science and information technology in general, but in particular, uh, the option that's available in NUI Galway to take computing as a subject uh, if you were doing GY 101, the Bachelor of Arts. So if you have attended uh, a few presentations already today, you might have heard a little bit about our university. Uh, if this is the first presentation you're listening into, um, our university was founded uh, back in 1845. So we've been around for a while. And back then it was called Queen's College. Uh, it changed its name to University College Galway, so commonly known as UCG. And its name today is the National University of Ireland Galway or NUI Galway. So we've had a long, long history uh, here in Galway. And the picture here shows our quadrangle, the old building from 1845, uh, which is a lovely place uh, still in use today and a lovely place for, for students to uh, hang out. Well, things have changed quite substantially uh, till since then, uh, just considering the buildings alone, uh, since 2005, we've had 16 new buildings on campus. And this really has transformed the campus and made it quite a dynamic uh, and modern campus for our students. We have currently around 18,000 students enrolled at NUI Galway and with an alumni of 110,000 worldwide. Our university now ranks among the top 1% of universities worldwide. And this is based on data from the QS World University Rankings. The university spends annually 278 million and our graduates uh, are one of the top graduates in the world also and 98% of our graduates will either find work immediately or continue their education within six months of graduating. One other big change in our university is that nowadays our students come from across uh, the world and we have students registered from over 104 countries. So as I said, my main focus today is to talk to you about computer science and information technology in the BA degree. And I suppose the first thing to mention is why do we call it computer science and information technology? So across different computing degrees within our own university here and uh, worldwide, uh, computing subjects or computing degrees are called by different names. So a kind of standard name, I suppose, is computer science. Uh, but because we teach these subjects into uh, the BA, uh, within the BA, the subject is called information technology. But really the names can be interchangeable uh, because uh, we in the School of Computer Science are, are teaching these subjects. So when you look at uh, information on computing uh, within the BA degree, you will see it referred to as IT or information technology. Uh, but you are really learning about computers and learning about computer science. 
So uh, looking just an, uh, at the College of Arts, Social Sciences and uh, Celtic Studies, we offer uh, IT as a subject as part of the BA degree. And in addition, you might see IT mentioned as part of some denominated BA degree programs. And we teach those uh, subjects as well in those denominated programs. But there are separate uh, presentations on the denominated program. So I won't talk about the denominated programs uh, here today. So before I give more details on uh, what uh, a student might do if they were picking IT as part of a BA degree, let me just step back for a minute and talk about computer science and computing in general. And we might ask, well, who needs a degree in computer science uh, before we talk about what that degree entails? Well, the answer uh, is that a surprisingly number, a surprising number of uh, companies uh, do uh, look for graduates with computing skills. And if we just look even in Galway here in the city and county, we actually have hundreds of tech companies employing thousands of students who have technical and computing skills. We have companies that have been associated with Galway for many years now, as well as uh, new companies and lo lots of startup companies as well. So Galway really is a thriving environment uh, for tech companies and for computing companies. What kind of things do these companies do? Well, they essentially span a range of uh, different applications. This is both in Galway, in Ireland, and worldwide as well. So just picking out a few examples, which may be familiar to you, uh, we have the area of home automation, where we, have, we see increasingly more and more as smart network devices. From quite important devices in terms of controlling heat and water consumption and security, uh, to controlling our appliances, uh, perhaps turning on our kettle um, or uh, our light, our lighting. A very important aspect of this, of course, in the last uh, year, year or so has been remote work. And this has been made possible um, and me being here today uh, from my own home and, and talking to you live, uh, has been made possible by technology and by the programs that we're using. So today I'm using Zoom and uh, Zoom before lockdown in March 2020 probably wasn't really that known, well known and probably not well used in Ireland anyway. Um, and at the time back in March 2020, it had to grow rapidly uh, in order to be able to service the number of people that were actually joining and using uh, it as a technology to enable remote work and remote meetings. And from our perspective, just using Zoom, we probably didn't even notice uh, this happening in the background. So Zoom was able to sort of increase its capacity almost tenfold uh, by piggybacking essentially on services that already existed. So cloud storage, for example, uh, in terms of uh, Microsoft or Amazon services that were available. And that has really had a huge impact on lots of people's lives, especially this last year, uh, enabling them to work safely from home where possible. Something we might also be quite familiar with is home entertainment, which has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. Uh, nowadays, in terms of on-demand TV, uh, on-demand uh, music with all the services that we might sign up to there. These use lots of different uh, computer science uh, applications and programs and networks. And all of these from our Netflix to our Spotify um, are possible because of advances made in computer science, in programming, in software engineering. 
And I would say also that there's still plenty left to do in these domains. So I think in the next 10 years, we'll see even more advances in terms of our home entertainment. Another important application domain, uh, particularly with respect to our climate crisis, is a smart use of our energy resources. And some of our devices help us with that. Um, but also there are lots of programs at a larger scale, not just at a home scale, uh, that help uh, in terms of our energy consumption. One example of this is our uh, electric cars. Uh, and also, I suppose, uh, more into the future, our autonomous uh, cars or our self-driving cars. And these are a great example of lots, again, lots of areas within computing, again, um, like our networks, like our um, programs, but also the area of artificial intelligence and machine learning, which those areas are going to be used in terms of um, our self-driving cars. So that leads us on to that area, of course, which we hear a lot about uh, in terms of uh, AI or artificial intelligence and machine learning. And all our big tech companies like Amazon, Netflix, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, whatever a company you can think of really, are investing and are using uh, these techniques, both from a research perspective and an actual application, so integrating at these techniques into their actual programs and products. And it's not just, I suppose, the obvious tech companies that are using uh, programming and um, these kind of um, ma um, machine learning programs, also areas and industries that perhaps we wouldn't traditionally associate with computers uh, now are using programs and computing as standard. So an example here is the medical uh, industry, where if you look across different areas uh, within hospitals, within GPs, um, we see the use of uh, medical equipment, but also programs uh, to assist medical practitioners uh, in their work. So also then from the perspective of uh, who needs a degree in computer science, well, if there's uh, all these companies are using these, uh, building these programs and building these applications, it's not surprising probably that there are lots of jobs available uh, in this area. But what's also interesting or hopefully interesting to note is that these jobs, these computing jobs are also considered quite good jobs. So this company, uh, Glassdoor in, in the US, run these anonymous surveys every year uh, to get employees uh, to rate the, the job they do, essentially. And each year, jobs that are associated with computing, like programming, like data scientist, uh, like DevOps engineer, so developing applications, they're ranked in the top 10 of, across all professions. And so that's a real strong endorsement for the type uh, of environment that you might work in also. So given uh, uh, that we uh, know a little bit about where you might be applying your skills, uh, what about studying computer science and information technology at NUI Galway? Well, first to just tell you a little bit about our school or my school, which is the School of Computer Science. This is our building here. At the moment, we have 28 academic staff, seven support staff and about 40 research staff. And we have over 600 students, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level. In our undergraduate programs, we have the most students. So we have about 400 students there. We have a four year computer science and IT degree uh, with the code GY350. And then we also teach into the Bachelor of Arts degree, uh, which has the course code GY101. As I said at the start, we also contribute to other arts programs, but we also contribute to science and engineering programs also 
teaching fundamental computer science subjects at undergraduate level across uh, many programs. We also have a large offering of postgraduate programs, both at, both at the, the, well, across thought, thought and research and research only. And at the research only level there, we're talking about, for example, MSc by research and PH degrees. And these are really important at, for our university and for our school also. So we have the whole uh, sort of spectrum of programs. So to talk then specifically about GY 101 and information technology. So within GY 101, if you um, are in the Bachelor of Arts program, in first year, you get to choose three subjects. And IT can be one of these subjects. So you pick IT and two other subjects. And then moving into second year, you continue with two of these subjects and then you keep those two subjects in your third or final year. So for example, then you can take IT as one of three subjects in first year, one of two subjects in second and your final year. And if you're interested in the BA International, which is a four year BA degree, you can also choose IT as one of your subjects for the BA International. How do you choose these subjects? So there are some restrictions in terms of the subjects you can take just from a practical point of view. So in, again, GY 101 for first year, you will be given a, a list of subjects across seven groups. And you can select one subject from each group. So from your three subjects, you cannot select more than one subject from a group. So you can see here that information technology is in group five. So that gives you lots of other options. So you can't pick the other two subjects there in group five if you wanted to pick information technology, but you've lots and lots of options across the other groups. And we see all combinations uh, in terms of the our st students uh, taking information technology. Students might take information technology with maths or with economics, or with a language like English, Gaelic, Spanish or French. We also see many of our students taking information technology with geography and with economics. So typically at second and third year, we'll have a great mix of students with, you know, lots have, taking lots of different subjects with their information technology subject, which makes for a very interesting uh, group of students. What specifically then would you study uh, in those um, in that subject in first, second and your third or final year? Well, it's very important that our students actually learn real computing skills. And one of the very most important, I suppose, computing skill is programming. This means that we actually learn how to get a computer to do work for us. So to process information, uh, to analyze uh, information for us. So we have programming courses in all three years. In first year, the programming, programming uh, we do is using Python. And then in second and third year, the programming is with Java. And we do also would cover lots of other fundamental topics like uh, generally uh, learning about computers, um, and learning about um, algorithms, which is another aspect of programming, learning about databases and SQL programming, and a little bit more uh, learning about how to analyze and create um, our interfaces and our programs and design those. So what are the entry requirements? Well, there is no special entry requirement uh, if you would like to do information technology. It's the normal GY 101 uh, Bachelor of Arts entry requirement, which is a minimum grade H5 in two subjects and passes in four others at ordinary six, uh, 06 or higher seven uh, level. And uh, the normal entry requirement is uh, the subject must include Irish, English, and one other language at least, and in three other subjects recognized for entry purposes. You don't need to have uh, any computing uh, experience 
uh, to take information technology. Most of our students wouldn't have studied uh, computing in any formal way at all. And that's actually at the BA level and also at our uh, BSc level. So we wouldn't assume that students would know anything about programming uh, or computing in first year. What are your careers uh, options uh, if you do take information technology uh, as part of your BA degree? Well, a lot of our, the career options are similar to many graduates who would um, have a BA. Um, and in, in, for, for many uh, graduates, they would look at a postgraduate degree. Uh, so many of our graduates who are interested in computing and have learned to love uh, computing over the course of their BA degree would take a one year or a two year postgraduate degree course. And at that stage then, because that's a full time essentially computing uh, degree, they would be um, able to just go into a, a graduate position in any of these tech companies and essentially have a full-time uh, computing career. So it's often difficult for students to um, figure out really if uh, they would like uh, computing or information technology because many students haven't chosen or haven't had an option to choose computer science in a second level uh, or may have picked other subjects even if, if computer science was available as an option. And this is really one of the great advantages of taking IT as part of the BA because you don't have to commit to a complete full degree uh, of computers, you're just taking uh, IT as, as half of your degree essentially. Um, but you may be interested in IT, I suppose, if you have a general interest in technology or if you like problem solving in general and creating new things. So problem solving uh, is a, a skill that we often see in lots of other subjects. And so if you like that kind of problem solving idea, um, you may like computing and information technology as well. I just want to mention briefly the difference then between uh, the GY101 and GY350. So GY350 is the BSc in Computer Science and Information Technology. It's a four years honors degree and it has work placement as part of the degree program. And it would have far more uh, computing uh, subjects uh, than uh, we can give in the BA uh, degree because of uh, having less time essentially uh, with a three-year degree versus a four and a full-time computing degree versus sort of a uh, half of a degree with the BA. Our GY350 degree is accredited with Engineers Ireland. And after this degree, uh, our graduates are, are suitable for direct entry at two graduate jobs. Our degree focuses very strongly again on programming but also uh, on areas like machine learning, medical informatics, energy and environmental informatics, and also digital media and games development. So to summarize then, um, I think these are two nice quotes that we have because they highlight that Everyone really is impacted by computing and uh, applications and everyone is using them in their daily life. Uh, maybe they're not fully aware that they're using them. A lot of the time, even if we're aware that we're using computing programs, uh, we perhaps don't know how they're created. And these superstars here are sort of saying that it's really important uh, for our future that we understand about coding and how these things are built. So uh, a, a quote here, we use code every time we're on the phone, on the web, shopping every day. It's become how our world is run. So I take comfort in having a basic understanding of how something as important as this works. And this is from an NBA basketball player uh, talking about coding. Another uh, quote here from Carly Kloss, an American fashion model. 
Uh, she is particularly interested in getting uh, girls to code. And she says, I think it's crucial that young women learn to code as early as possible to ensure that we have a voice and a stake in what the world looks like. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, you'd like to enter them in the chat. I'm very happy to answer them. But you can also um, go to the public uh, account and some of my colleagues are there ready to ask any specific questions that you might have. Uh, our, our URL for our website uh, is also included there. Thank you very much.